Sean, let's discuss uh, exactly what you can tell us about these drone attacks that have been taking place on Russian soil. Yeah, in, literally as a, as a lead in just because there were two people killed in Kyiv. So it's obviously these attacks going both ways. Um, Vitaly Klitschko claimed there were 20 drone attacks on the city of Kyiv last night. But as you say, the big news is the uh, massive wave of attacks on six regions of Moscow uh, overnight and the biggest attack in the, uh, since the war started. Now you can see most of the targets are around Moscow and down to the south close to Ukraine. But I'm going to draw your attention up to Peskov, which is just up near you. It's only about 20 miles away from the Estonian Latvia um, a border to the, to the north there and apparently there were 10 to 20 drones attacking up there. Um, also down in Crimea um, the Russians claim that they've shot down lots of drones that were attacking there and also in Moscow the uh, airspace over the Moscow airport was shut down again last night so this is pretty big wave of attacks overnight. So, so obviously most of the fighting during the war has been on Ukrainian soil. More picking up by these drones on Russian soil. Is this, is this comfortably the biggest day of attacks on Russian soil during the war? It is comfortably, and it's quite significant, I think, particularly. Is this a, a degree of frustration from the Ukrainians that they're just not making progress, or is it actually time to events on the ground? And I'm always suspicious of coincidences, and you look at exactly where the war is at the moment, almost certainly it is linked. Let's close in on Peskov, which is uh, a safe. It's the home to the Aleutian 76s, which is military, very large transport aircraft that are used to transport troops, ammunition, potentially vehicles and stuff like that. Um, there's loads of them, that, but these are quite vulnerable. And actually up there, they haven't hidden them away. They've literally been in open air base, not in hardened aircraft shelters. And the report suggested initially that the Russians said a couple had been damaged. Then later reports said that actually two of them had been destroyed or were blazing on fire. And that actually four had actually been damaged. These are strategic assets, so that is significant. But it's also linked to the war and the phase of the war. We're 12 months in, 12, 12 weeks in uh, to the spring offensive. And um, there's, the front lines have been pretty static. But it's also drifting into two wars. One in the north, which is Kupiansk. That's where the Donbass, the Russians seem to be still on their front foot at the moment. Down in the south, from the Ukrainian perspective, they've crossed the Dnipro River and therefore they're trying to push there. But the main story is around Robotyne, um, which is to the east of uh, Zaporizhia. That's where it looks likely that the Ukrainians have actually broken through. Remember those layered defences we talked about? It looked like they've got through most of those. And if they are on the cusp of a major breakthrough, conventional wisdom, Russia would rush its troops in to plug the gap. And what looks likely they're doing with these drone attacks is forcing Russia to go, where do I put my reserves? Do I put them in Crimea? Do I put them back in Moscow? Do I took them up in Kupiansk? Or do I plug that gap? And that seems to be what the, uh, what the drone attack is so about. So do you think we'll continue to see lots more of these drone attacks? I don't think they're going to have enough drones to be able to uh, continue these drone attacks for any length of time. I think it's going to be a small window. The, the key for me is why these drone, in previous wars, we've not really seen the use of them. It's become the drone wars. And Ukraine's been very good at using long range, uh, sorry, the Russians have been using long range Shahid 136 drones. But the Ukrainians have also been using these nano drones. And they, the advantage is they're long range, short range, they're cheap, they're cheerful. They're not, they can't protect themselves very well. So they're quite vulnerable. But you know, the quantity has a quality all of its own, and we're seeing that by putting a mass of attacks. Also, innovation, which is not a byword for Russian military, is something the Ukrainians, they're adapting these things overnight in response to threats and making them more impressive. So they're being, the drones are exploiting Russian complacency. They're putting large aircraft exposed on airfields. They're being very good at psychological warfare. They're attacking Russia. They're not damaging anything specifically, but psychologically, a huge impact. And on the front line, it's the eyes and ears of the battlefield. These drones are fundamentally changing the way that war is being conducted with profound implications for us in the long term. Sure. As always, thanks so much.